So Brooke, this is quite a deal. Quite a deal and a string of very transformative moves yeah. for United Technologies. So this, of course, coming on the heels of that $30 billion acquisition of Rockwell Collins and United Technologies, it's breaking itself up into three pieces. So this is a lot going on, and I think that would be the one issue that investors maybe have is can management juggle all of this? But I do think the one thing that perhaps works in the company's favor is that it will end up being very focused on the aerospace and defense industries. I think that's more attractive for investors than sort of the sprawling conglomerate that they had before. And Brooke, you have a great piece out of the Bloomberg right now that makes a simple point. You get rid of Kerry, you get rid of Otis, and you bring in Raytheon, and son of a gun, the revenue ends up just about where you started with a much more focused company. It is. I know it's really fascinating. So they'll have about $75 billion in sales split between the two of them, between Raytheon and United Technologies. That's a roughly what United Technologies Technologies was targeting for its existing mix of businesses right now. So you're keeping all of the scale of the company, but losing some of the, the factors that investors didn't like, where you were dealing with different capital requirements, margin profiles, growth profiles. But the other hand, you know, one issue I've had with all these industrial breakups is do you end up looking a little too sparse when we get into the next recession? Do you miss some of that diversity? And this helps solve that problem by increasing their exposure to the defense contracting side. Part of me is like GE must be like, oh man, <laughs> I think totally wanted do that too. <laughs> You're right though because they were said to be interested in Rockwell Collins and not really in a position to do that deal and then here's another one that they really cannot be in contention for. How much of this event on Donald Trump in the sense of they're, they're going to really specifically focus on defense and you might think that's so vulnerable but given where President Trump is with defense spending maybe it's not such a bad bet. So Raytheon is actually very interesting. 40% of its backlog is to overseas buyers. So they're actually not as focused on the Pentagon as some of the other defense contractors. And they're also in really high value areas right now, like missile defense, radar integration, more electronic systems that will probably be in demand regardless of what necessarily happens with the US defense budget and whether or not we get a new president. What's the read through to Boeing? So that's where it's really interesting. I sort of wondered what this 737 MAX crisis might mean for Boeing's negotiating leverage with its suppliers. Mm -hmm. They've really had the upper hand over the past couple of years. And I think it seems logical to think that balance of power might now shift. And this deal certainly gives United Technologies the heft to go back to Boeing and say, you know what, we're not going to take your push for price creases anymore. We're mm -hmm. also a very big player in this industry. We think we have high value products and we're going to stick to our guns a little bit.